Welcome to episode three of our video series, Burning with Intelligence. In this video, I'll be going over our latest data transfer interface, the Mark A DTI. I'll be covering connected devices, remote control and data gathering functions, and also the new DTI rule system. The Mark 8 DTI features a 12.1 inch capacitive touchscreen and acts as the communication gateway between the user and up to 10 Mark 8 MMs or Mini Mark 8 MMs, 10 Mark 8 EGA EVOs, 10 input output modules and 10 gas and air pressure sensors. All the information gathered by the DTI is stored for up to three years, can be remotely accessed by a BACnet or Modbus system via Ethernet links and RS-422 up to 3,300 feet or one kilometer away. Now, once the DTI is connected to a local network or the internet, all the information on the DTI can be viewed and accessed via a Windows PC or tablet using the included DTI manager software. Now, all the connected MMs and EGAs can be individually viewed by the DTI and the DTI manager software on PCs and all the information can be exported into an Excel spreadsheet. In addition to all the information the DTI can read, a number of remote control functions can also be achieved. Now these are limited by safety regulations and they include enabling and disabling of burners, adjusting individual required set points, as well as the global required set point, enabling shuffle sequencing of boilers and reordering boilers in a sequencing loop, selecting the lead boiler and also adjusting individual firing rates of burners. Viewable data on the Mark 8 DTI and DTI manager software includes, but is not limited to, boiler temperature or pressure, individual firing rates, fault status, options and parameters, emissions data from the EGA, gas, air and oil pressures, water level information, blowdown data, plus much more. Now these read and write functions are also available on a BMS system via Modbus. BACnet can be used with the protonode converter. On the Mark 8 DTI, the rule system allows the user to set actions upon preset events. Inputs to these rules can be from any connected MM, EGA, gas or air pressure sensor, input output module, or even the DTI itself. Now the parameters of these rules have been set by us within the boundaries of the system architecture, unlike a PLC, so no external coding or configuration is necessary. So upon a triggering event, a rule can be configured to perform actions such as send an email to up to 10 email addresses, adjust individual set points, adjust an analog output, trigger a digital output, or even output an alarm status. Now the best way to describe this is the bridge between Autoflame and a PLC while maintaining the safeties of the Autoflame equipment and getting rid of the complications of a PLC. So we're going to create a load of if this then that statements based on various inputs, various trigger conditions and we can choose what our outputs may be. Let's have a look on the DTI. Now we have entered the rule configuration page you can see I've got 10 rules set up here. Now we can create up to 100 of these. So let's have a look at a couple examples. First one, when an MM goes into fault, this could be any MM or a specific one, I'm going to send an email to myself. Rules two, three and four are all linked together, so they have the same input type. When the main gas line pressure reading reads less than 1.8 psi, I'm going to do three things. I'm going to send an email to emergency at autoflame.com. I'm going to select the individual firing rate for MMID1. And I'm also going to change the individual firing rate for MMID1. In my case, I'm putting it into low flame hold. So I've just gone over a handful of the rules that can be set up. As I said, up to 100 of these can be configured. In a future video, I'll show you exactly how we do that. So tune in next time for more intelligent answers to burning questions.